So basically, it's a bunch of coding challenge. It's released you might during the... You might need this. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, you're gonna put this in your pocket or something. Let me try. Definitely amateurs. Hello? Hi? Hello? 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 Yeah, it's on. Oh. <laughs> We're not that bad. Okay. We, we remember the bad Okay, yeah, it's, it's a bunch of coding challenge come up by this guy. I would say, I think he's a very smart guy to be, to the, because the challenge are really fun to do. And so it's released during the Christmas period over 25 days. So they, he will release one each day and people will comp compete to see who can complete his challenge first for each day. And so it looks very, very old school like this. So each day there will be like one challenge. Then you will open out the puzzle input, then you so the puzzle input is unique for each person who log in. So you cannot just copy your friend's answer. So, and then you submit it and you can, so there's a, so, okay. This is just what, I'm, what I was saying. So you, you are free to use any programming language you want. So because I use JS, so I will share today's talk in JS. So, so there are things like leaders board, so you can see who actually complete the fastest. There are some really crazy people out there that can finish in two minutes, five minutes, yeah. <laughs> then you can look at your own personal step. My step wasn't that good, but because most of the time when they released the challenge, it was lunch time, so I wasn't doing the challenge. <laughs> yeah. So, so you can also see actually how many people actually completed. You can see like along the way. People are dropping off because they find it too tough to too harm, harmful for their health. <laughs> so, but if you need a little more help, there's always a Reddit. You can people actually share their solution, and you can actually see how how it's done. So, so I'm going to share, share some of the learnings I, I've I, I've learned from this doing this ever code because it's it's uh, if you do your day to day JavaScript. You hardly actually touch some of the tools that you that, that you get to learn uh, that that is out there. You know you learn about it, but you hardly actually try out these tools because the kind of problem you face in your day to day is actually very restricted. So doing coding challenge sometimes actually is very helpful to open up your eyes to to new things out there. So for example, so first thing, uh, generators. Actually, like who here knows about generator and actually do use it in your code. So, so actually, you see, actually, no one actually, even you learn it, you hardly actually find the chance to use it. But actually, coding challenge is really, has a lot of problems that actually generator is ideal for. So uh, by the way, for those who not sh uh, don't know what the generator is like, basically a function with a star, and it will, the function will return an iterator. So you can, within a function, you can have this use statement that will return a value, and the next time you call the next, it will go to the next use statement. And so, so it allows your function to operate like a go-to statement. So, so I'll illustrate, I will just, just use one case where it's, it's actually a very nice case to say. So for example, one of the problem day three of 2017. So the problem is actually about spiral, spiral traversal. So it's not that hard once you actually draw it out on paper. So once you draw it on paper, you realize that actually the the pattern is very easy. So right one step, up one step, left two step, down two step, right. So every time you move two, you actually increase one more step to, to go. So, so since the pattern is so easy, so we can actually write a generator for this to solve this problem. So this is basically the implementation of what I was writing down just now. So it's like uh, right one step, up one step, then increase the number of steps to two steps then. So, so you see all this U statement down here, so when I actually call it, call my uh, function to, to actually get the result, so I only need to just do a dot next, uh, dot next dot value. So, so why is it this one is appropriate? So you will say like, why don't I just create an object to do it instead? Or, 
uh, say just uh, I mean, why do I just take this entire code and put inside here and isn't it, isn't it extra that I create a generator that I use the generator inside? Because uh, just I forget to mention one point that the average of code usually has two parts. So the first part, so the first part maybe is like something very simple, just do a spiral traversal. So the second part, you need to do something at each step. So you see, now if I had actually done the whole function inside, inside here, then I need to put something else, another process down here, to inside each of these use statement, to to actually do us, do some further task. So actually, this actually made the code very ugly, because you actually the traversal step and the processing step can be actually separated out, separated out cleanly. In this case, if I use a generator. So, so what I need to change is just do some process at this step because I already yield the current position that I traverse to. So this is one use case where, where actually generator is very appropriate. So you say like, why don't you just create an object? So the difference between generator and just create an object with internal state is your internal state is not encapsulated as a variable or as a variable in your object. It's actually encapsulated, encapsulated as you can use the part of the code. Uh, the how does it? Uh, I have, sorry, I have to keep going back to this. <laughs> so, so just the position of this code encapsulate the state of the generator. So, if I have written this entire thing as in the form of a object, then I need to keep track which step am I in? Am I in the left step or the up step or the down step? I have to keep track, like, what is the number of steps I am at right now? But with a generator, all this is actually encapsulated as the position of the code, which functions very much like a go-to statement. So in certain cases, actually, go-to statement is actually much more readable than creating an object and encapsulating states. So, so this is uh, the first thing that I learned. So I'll go to, uh, I'll just show another example. So there's another problems because it's all Christmas related, so they have this reindeer Olympics. There's, actually, it's very simple. It's just, if you fly for a distance, then you have to rest because it can, you need to recharge then. So you have to just see which, uh, the, uh, the question is just see which one arises first. So if, if the problem is just simply compare a bunch of reindeer that travel in this mode, of course you can have, you can have just a, a complicated mathematical equation that solve for this. But the part two of the problem requires me to actually solve for this for at every time interval. So it will be actually now it will be actually more wasteful to use the complicated mathematical equation. It will be easier to just compute every compute the state of the reindeer at every step. So I just make, make each reindeer into a express them as a generator. Then I just call of them with a dot next for each uh, each tick of the event. So, so this is another example where generator could be used. So there are actually a lot, a lot of other examples within uh, event of code. So if you already get to try, you all can see. So what is the next thing that I find is uh, very useful that I learned is uh, so we do use regex some of the time, but actually coding challenge actually push your knowledge of regex to the maximum because you you get to try things that that you don't normally. Try. So for example, for one question in my coding challenge, it's actually finding ABBA sequence. Basically, it can be like A, B, B, A, B, A, B, A, A, B, X, Y, Y, X, or Y, X. So any ABBA sequence. So do you all know that actually regex have this very interesting pattern that you can use? So this slash two slash one basically means take the result that is the second captured result. <coughs> slash one means take the first capture result. So actually, I didn't even know about this. So I actually Googled, found out about this, and actually used this to solve the challenge. So, so there are a lot of these chances to use regex when doing green challenge. So uh, another stuff that I find interesting is actually two core. So one of the 
So one of the challenge actually deals with this what we call a loop and say sequence. So this thing actually came out in, on the internet recently. Uh, somebody came out with this challenge that trying to actually, so it starts from one, and then this number is one, one, this number is two, one, this one. So it doesn't look like there's any pattern, but actually this is what we call a loop and say sequence. How it works is, since there's only one, one, we call it one, one. Then the next time there's two, one, so there's two, one. This time is there's one, two, and one, one. So this is the loop and say sequence. <laughs> so the, the task is not to figure out this challenge, uh, this sequence, because they already say it's a loop and say sequence, but to actually implement it, run it for 40 rounds and, and get the result out of it. So it's a very, very simple task. So I just write a recursion function that scan the first, first stretch of numbers and then continue with a recursion with the remaining stretch. But the problem is, when I run it for 40 rounds, you encounter what is called stack overflow. Because JavaScript has, has a, 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 does not have proper two core. So, there, but I read about, I mean, early, yes? Can you zoom in? Uh, zoom in. <laughs> uh, uh, you, can actually, you can actually, I share the link of the slide. You can actually uh, look from the .js issue. Yeah. So, but we can actually make this into a property call. So, so by changing the function, now I return the, the recurse function, and this is a property call, and now I can run for as many cycles as I want. But unfortunately, it's only supported in node 7 and 6.12. So it, somehow Google VA engine stops, the latest VA engine doesn't support. So even with a flat, you can't do it. But in, in case you actually still need this, actually there are ways to actually overcome it. You can actually don't write a recursion. Any recursion actually can be written as an iteration by using a stack. So next, I'm going to share about uh, enumeration. So a lot of coding challenge actually requires you to enumerate stuff. So enumerate all possible. So uh, rather than try and find the solution, you just enumerate all possible solution and you find the one that meets the criteria. So some example. So for example, uh, so we want to find all combination that totals to a certain value. So in this case, we can where we need to enumerate all possible assignment, assignment combination, like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, so there are, in some case, we need to uh, say travel, travel route from, uh, find the shortest route. So we need to enumerate all different permutation. So this is easy to say, or okay, just enumerate, but actually implementing enumeration requires some uh, some tricks. Uh. So another case here, we uh, instead of enumerating a, a trip from that covers all the destination, we are enumerating a seating arrangement. So this is actually not very much different from enumerating route. So you actually just need to fix one position, then enumerate the the other person, the other people around the table. So uh, find. Finally, there's also this problem here that is find the ideal recipe. So let's say I have uh, 100 units, 100 teaspoons. Then each teaspoon of a particular ingredient adds a certain properties to my, my cake. So, so we need to enumerate all the possible combination of this ingredient. So like, let's say I have three ingredients. I can have zero unit of the first ingredient, zero unit of the second ingredient. So, how do I actually enumerate all these possible combinations? So there are, there are ways to do it. So, so for example, I will use, so for example, enumerating assignment. So the zero, one, zero. So how, how do I actually, how do, the, one strategy to do that on JavaScript. So basically, you just need to count all the binary values. So you count from zero to two to the power n minus one. So you, then you use, number dot prototype dot to string two 
This will give you the binary representation of the number. Then from there, you can pair it with zero and you split it out. So this is a very easy way to enumerate from of, of all binary combinations. So this is my implementation. So this is the easy one. So we go to the harder one, the split combination that I mentioned about just now. So, so how do you enumerate so, while well, making sure that your total is always sum out to 100? So the trick here is instead of enumerating the numbers, you enumerate the split point. So, so let's say I have 10 items here. So let's say I need to make four, uh, how many here? One, two, one, two, three, four. Ah, let's say I have four, four types of ingredients here. So instead of enumerating the four ingredients the number, I enumerate the split. So I actually enumerated only three numbers down here. So I, so I enumerate by, say I make a cut at these two positions. Then, then the, the ingredients, the, the units of ingredient is actually just the difference between adjacent cards. So by doing this, I can ensure it always sum out to the total number. So uh, this is my implementation in, in JavaScript. So not, not expecting you all to read this, so you all re can read it when on, on, on your own laptop. So, so because I'm a very thorough person, so along the so along the way, I realized that actually I'm repeating all these enumeration tasks. So I end up I actually write all these helpers down for my coding tasks for different kind of enumeration tasks. So if you are going for for coding interviews, can actually come and look at my helpers for revision. Because enumeration is a very basic task, but it's the kind of stuff that under the pressure of interviews and stuff, you will always forget how to do it. <laughs> so next thing, we, how about lazy enumeration? Because just all the, fun, all the functions that I share are, are not lazy in the sense that it actually enumerates everything before it return. So in some cases, we actually don't want it to enumerate everything because the combination is just too much. We want it to return early once the first result come back. Uh, once the first result that, that meet a certain criteria come back. So how do we how do we do that? So we use this very nice new JavaScript tool also called Iterables. So who actually tried using Iterables before constructing your own Iterables? Other than using the default built-in. So so we can use what iterable does, uh, what, what iterable is, is basically a function that implements this special symbol, uh, special method called symbol dot iterator that returns an uh, iterator. So this function is, uh, this iterable is, you can use it by things like, say, for, for of loops, or you can use an array dot, for, uh, dot from, or you can use a spread operator, all this. So just a for, for example, so I rewrite the earlier one I shared about the, the assignment uh, assignment enumerator into an iterable, for, uh, iterable form. So with this form, I can actually I can actually break halfway once I actually found the result. I do need to enumerate every possible result out. So there is a correct way to use it and there's a wrong way. So iterable, you can actually use uh, array dot from you can use a spread operator, but these are the wrong way because once you do it array dot from you actually enumerate out everything already. It's no longer lazy. So the proper way is to use it in a for off loop so you can break off early. So also also while do playing with uh, coding challenge, you also will be doing a lot of graph searches. So some of the tips for graph searches, the very basic breakfast search, how to implement in JavaScript, always have a visitor, which is an object, so you can key and actually check for duplicates. Then you have an unvisitor, which is an array. So uh, breakfast search, use a queue, so use shift. Therefore, search use 
use a pop, uh, use a step. So that's why I use a pop. So the important thing to remember, so for, for, so for those who are familiar with, with com size and do know about breakfast and deficit search, so the important thing to know about, uh, to, to remember for deficit search is remember that because you don't do deficit search, uh, you usually don't do deficit search randomly. Because if you are deficit search, you can always end early once the result is found. But deficit search, you, you will search until the end of the, the, tr the, the tree node, then before you visit the next node. So usually we will sort our result and we actually visit those that are more likely to give, a, give the result we want. So because we do some sorting, so it's important to actually reverse the sort because you're using a stack. Because you're using a stack, the first one that you pop is the, one, the, is the last one that you push in. So because of the last, last in first, I always reverse, remember to reverse your, your result. So also in, in Apple of Code, we also do a lot of this kind of assembly code light of challenge. So in, when dealing with this kind of coding challenge, so it's very typically very hard to debug. So what I learned is not really learn. It's like finally I actually convinced myself to actually use the proper way to debug instead of using a console.log. So the proper way to debug a node, a, a node program is actually use this inspect break flag. So how many people actually do use this one before? Yeah, so a few of you. So most of you are lazy. Are just we are just use console dot log. So the but with this node inspector, you actually get more powerful stuff. All the powerful stuff that you get from node. So so right now, I'll just some of the some of the learnings like as much as possible work on paper. So I interview people who come in do do our coding interview, refuse to work on paper, then spend hours on the screen. So work on paper first. Example like the case where I show you all the spiral traversal. This kind of, this kind of problem is very easy once you put it down on paper. So also doing premature optimize. Focus more on writing clean code than actually writing performance code. So that's Wrapping up, so I actually shared all my solution to Apple of Code for the three years, 2015, 16, and 17 on GitHub. So if you all are trying out and you all are stuck, actually you can refer to my solution. <laughs> so that's all. So we have time for questions. Just back me up the story. You did this every day for 120 days. I didn't quite. No, 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 hundred. Uh, so it's over 25 days. Okay. So I found out about this only in 2017. So I realized that's the 2016 version and 2015 version. So over that same 25 days, I decided to do all three years in one go. <laughs> yeah. So what's your average time you stuff? So. Uh, uh, depend on how hard the problem is. Some problem I spend actually five hours or more to, to solve. So it's, it's not that trivial like the spiral traversal and all this. The one I show are the really trivial one. <laughs> the average problem is much more <laughs> difficult. So what is the benefit you would say when you're doing more uh, mundane tasks or so like for example like the generators and all this like I would say I would still find it hard to actually apply it in my daily task but but now I actually have the confidence that I actually know how to use a generator or even write iterables and but but just like just learning yourself, uh, just learning by reading MDN and stuff, you don't really have the confidence to say that you actually really understand. But when you actually work on this stuff that is outside of your, outside of your daily, the, the what you are doing in your daily stuff, it actually gives you the confidence that, that you actually understand these concepts. And then you might realize that actually apply to your that.
Yeah. So, so anyone have any question on iterables or? <laughs> is there those challenges? Uh, like, what's pushing you to look for a smart solution like a generator instead of going for an object? Is because there's always a way to solve the same problem. So yeah. Because I, I want I so even though the uh, the challenge is really about like finishing it, be, being the first person to finish it. I, to most people, th but I I will rather play this game in the sense of writing the code that is most understandable, clean. That somebody else reading my solution will immediately know this what I am trying to do. So so. This is something I, I actually practice a lot myself, even within my day work. So, so when I'm doing this challenge, I also try to actually write code in a very clean way, even by using these new tools. Yeah. Um, I've heard of this thing called the 408 loop. I haven't really used it, I think. Oh, 408. 408, something of something. <laughs> I think it's ES so ESA. Yeah. I think it's a ESA feature for yeah. uh, for for a way loop. Not yet, but I think it's actually also running on. It's running on an iterable. It's running on. Can you do like async await with the iterator stuff? With the the generator stuff? Yes. That's that's actually. Um, what do we call it? Is in generators. Generators. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's actually proposal for for AC iterators. But I haven't tried it. <laughs> yeah. Do you find any uses for uh, proxies and maps and sets? Maps yeah, and sets. sets. I haven't actually, because I, I think objects are good enough for me for now. I mean, I did use map, uh, sets before sometimes. Cool. Any more questions? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Do you write tests for your solutions? Why or why not? Did okay. you write tests? No, I'm for your questions. Why can't answer tests? No. No, but, but I usually construct my function, uh, my solutions that so uh, so I, I was lazy here to just copy in the input rather than actually passing the so I, I try and buy one <laughs> <laughs> so ge generally I will write my my function with extra variables with default uh, with some default variables that allows me to actually run tests on it so because the the actual problems, I will, I will actually set a default value to the additional variable. That so it allows me to actually make, uh, to actually run on different, uh, so for example, the actual case, I need to run on a say 50 by 50 box. But usually the question will provide some like test example with like say a five by five box uh, stuff. So I will actually supply an additional variable that allows me to actually change the change my function out to 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 be able to run tests on those test case. But it's still manual. I didn't actually write a specifically write a separate test for for my functions. Uh. Yeah. 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 Y